Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Today we're going to be talking about the unit circle. I've got, I've got a few videos planned that I'm going to be coming out with in the next few days, maybe even weeks, uh, talking about the unit circle and some different things you can do with it. Um, but I would want to kind of start that discussion with talking about some of the more kind of introductory things you can do with the unit circle. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So first of all, this right here is the unit circle. So the unit circle in general is meant to be a circle which is centered at the origin. So you can see we have our y-axis, our y-axis right here going down through the center vertically, and our x-axis going across the center horizontally. So it's centered at the origin, at the point zero, zero is the center of the circle. And the unit circle specifically has a radius of one. So you can see if you go, you know, one unit up from the center, you get to this point here, zero, one. One unit to the right is one, zero. One unit down is zero, negative one. And one unit to the left is negative one, zero. So the radius is one, meaning all of these points on this edge of the circle are one unit away from the center. But obviously only the kind of straight up, straight to the sides or straight down actually lands on a nice round point. So I want to talk a bit about what you can actually do with this unit circle. So in this, this unit circle I have right here, I just put the radian measure of each of the kind of important measurements on the unit circle. So these are the common points on the unit circle that you'll see displayed. Uh, you can see basically there's three within each quadrant, right? So there's these three in the first quadrant, Similarly, you've got these three over here in the second quadrant, third and fourth quadrant, you have these three kind of points. So those are the ones that you'll most commonly see listed in the unit circle. And the reason is because they are uh, really, you know, there's a pattern, which I'm going to make a video here where I talk a little bit more about how to actually memorize the points on the unit circle. And I'll talk more about what that pattern is in that video. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you're notified when that video comes out. It'll be coming out in a few days, uh, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. Um, but anyway, there is a pattern to the points on this unit circle. Um, and so that's why these are kind of the three, three kind of points within each quadrant that you'll see most often. They're actually relatively easy to memorize. I know it looks like a lot, right? Like these pi over six, pi over four, all these different radian measures, it kind of seems like a lot to memorize. There is a pattern that makes them actually relatively easy to memorize. There is also a pattern with the points themselves on the edge of these, uh, on the edge of this circle. So uh, it is, you know, very, very intentional, kind of the reason why these points specifically are on the unit circle. And like I said, I'll talk more about that. But first, I want to talk a little bit about how to actually use this unit circle to evaluate different trig functions. So the unit circle is very closely tied with sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's say you had a problem like this where they tell you to evaluate the sine, cosine, and tangent of these specific values, these specific real numbers. So you can see we're gonna do t equals pi over four and then t equals negative four pi over three. And we're gonna use the unit circle to do it, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So first one is pi over four. So let's just go up here. I'll write that over here so we can uh, use our unit circle. But we're gonna do t equals pi over four, okay? So we need to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of this value. Uh, before I jump into showing you how to do this, be sure to check out my pre-calculus study guide I came out with a little bit ago jakesmathlessons.com slash precalculus study dash guide or scan that QR code in the upper right hand corner of your screen. It should be a huge help to you as you work through precalculus or college algebra homework, study for tests, really anything to do with the course. So go check that out. I know it's going to save you a lot of time and headaches. Uh, but anyway, how to actually find sine of a certain value, cosine of a certain value, tangent of a certain value based on the unit circle. So like I was saying, this unit circle will, you can do this exact calculation with any of these angle measurements that are listed in the unit circle. So basically any of these numbers that you see in here, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, and so on, right? All these numbers going along here, you can find the cosine, the sine, and tangent of these values, zero or two pi, uh, and then 
using the unit circle, you can actually find these three things up there. So basically the first step in doing that is to find where that angle measure shows up in your unit circle. So in this case, I'm showing you how to do this with radians. You can do the same thing with degrees. Each of these radian measurements has a corresponding degree measurement that goes with it. So if these were degrees, you could do the same thing. I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that in this video, but one thing that you could always do is convert between radians to degrees or degrees to radians and find the sine cosine tangent of that, that radian using this unit circle specifically. And I have made a video showing you how to convert between degrees and radians, so go check that out up at the top of the screen there. Uh, I'll put one of the info cards up there in the corner so you can check that out. But all we have to do is find the specific angle measure that we're looking for in this problem. It's pi over 4. We just need to find that in our unit circle. So you can see right here, pi over 4 shows up in our unit circle. So if you're ever asked to find sine, cosine, or tangent of, of, of an angle that's not in the unit circle, there may be something you can do, which we'll get into in the next problem here in a second. But sometimes you may just not be able to use the unit circle to find it. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in a minute about how you can tell if that's the case. But in this case, we have pi over 4. Clearly, that's in the unit circle. So we find it in our unit circle. We go to this line, basically, that goes through pi over 4. And we look at this point here on the circle. What is this point? Well, this point is the coordinates of this point are square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So basically, the x coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. The y coordinate is also square root of 2 over 2. But the sine, cosine, and tangent can be found or calculated just by looking at the x and y coordinate of this point. So something to keep in mind, the sine of a certain angle measurement is always going to correspond to the y coordinate at that point. And let me rewrite that. That was a little messy. The cosine of a certain angle measurement is always going to correspond to the x coordinate on the unit circle at that angle measure. So if we want to find the sine and cosine, it's very simple. We just have to find that angle on the unit circle, see what the x and y coordinate are. The x is going to be your cosine, the y is going to be your sine. So in this case, the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. Okay, the tangent you're going to have to calculate. The tangent value doesn't show up directly on the unit circle. Only the cosine and the sine do. However, what you can keep in mind is the tangent of a certain angle is always the sine over the cosine. So the tangent of pi over 4 should always be the sine of pi over 4 divided by the cosine of pi over 4 which we just found is root 2 over 2 for the sine and root 2 over 2 for the cosine. So we would get root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, and we can actually calculate what this is. So keep in mind, if you ever have a fraction divided by a fraction, instead of dividing by this fraction on the denominator, we can multiply by its reciprocal. So we can do the numerator, root 2 over 2, times the reciprocal of the denominator, so 2 over root 2. Pretty, pretty simply here, we can see that there's going to be some canceling that goes on. The 2 on the denominator is going to cancel with the 2 on the numerator, turning both of those to 1s. The root 2 on the numerator is going to cancel with the root 2 on the denominator, turning both of those to 1s. So we basically just have 1 over 1 times 1 over 1, which is just 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is just going to be 1. Okay, so that's how you find your sine, cosine, and tangent for all those values. Okay, so let's do the next one. So the next one we're going to be doing is finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of t equals negative 4 pi over 3. We're going to say t equals negative 4 pi over 3. We're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of that value. So this one's a little bit weird because notice like I talked about when we were doing the last problem, negative 4 pi over 3. Do you see that anywhere here on the unit circle for any of these angle measures? No. In fact, there's not even any negative numbers on here. So that seems like maybe a bit of a problem. However, if you ever get a angle measurement, a radian or a degree, it could go either way, that is not on the unit circle, or in other words, 
not between 0 and 2 pi. So if we ever get an angle that is not between 0 and 2 pi, all of these angle measures are from 0 to 2 pi. So if you ever get something that is either negative or bigger than 2 pi, we do have a potential option that we can consider. What we can do is keep in mind that one rotation around the unit circle, right? So all these measurements are just measuring angles from the positive x axis. So this right here tells us that these two lines are pi over 6 radians away from each other. And we're always going to measure these angles going in this direction from the positive x axis. So we're going to go to all these measures until we get to 2 pi, and then we're back where we started. Well, you can actually keep going multiple rotations around the unit circle. So let's say we wanted to go 4 pi, which is obviously greater than 2 pi. If we went all the way around one full rotation, which is 2 pi, and then we've gone 2 pi so far to get up to 4 pi, we need to go another 2 pi. So that would be one more full rotation. So 2 full rotation circle gets us to 4 pi. And we can keep going as many times as we need to to get really any angle measure. It doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect, you know, 2 pi increment. It can be any amount. I just picked 4 pi because that was easy to calculate. But we can also go in the negative direction, right? So if, we, if we're measuring from the positive x-axis, typically we measure in this direction. But if we have a negative amount, like in this case we have negative 4 pi over 3, we can actually measure that by just going in this negative direction. So like if we wanted to measure negative pi over 6, we would just go pi over 6 units in the opposite direction, pi over 6 radians in the opposite direction, which would get us to this one right here, 11 pi over 6. So how do you actually kind of calculate that by looking at the unit circle? Well, if you ever have a negative amount, you can just add 2 pi as many times as you need to until you get up to a positive number, which is between 0 and 2 pi. So if we have negative 4 pi over 3, if we add 2 pi to that, the sine, cosine, and tangent of that value is going to be exactly the same as the sine, cosine, and tangent of negative 4 pi over 3. So to do this addition, we can just say um, negative 4 pi over 3. We want to get a common denominator, so we want to get it over 3. So we'll multiply 3 over 3. 2 pi times 3 over 3 to get 6 pi over 3. So we have negative 4 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 should give us 2 pi over 3. Okay, so these sine values that we're actually trying to find are actually going to be exactly the same as the sine of 2 pi over 3. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 and the tangent of 2 pi over 3. Okay, so now do you see this value on the unit circle? Well, yeah, it's right here. So now we can actually just directly use our unit circle. We can see that this is our x coordinate, this is our y coordinate, which means cosine is negative 1 half, sine is root 3 over 2, and then tangent is just going to be the sine over the cosine. So root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. Which again, if we're dividing by a fraction, we can instead multiply by its reciprocal. So that'll give us negative root, or sorry, root, positive root 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. The 2s are going to cancel, giving us negative root 3 over 1. Anything divided by 1 is just itself, so that's just going to be negative root 3. So the tangent is going to be negative root 3, the cosine is going to be 1 half, and that's going to be root 3 over 2. So that's it. Like I said, if you uh, do want to go check out my precalculus study guide I came out with recently, it's at jakesmathlessons.com slash precalculus dash study dash guide. And like I said, I'm going to be coming out with a nice video about how to memorize this unit circle here soon. Go hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss it. And if you're watching this later on, I'll go put that video right over there so you can go watch it right there. Thanks and see you next time.